can hear the thing comes down the bottom now. That <laughs> earth got some fun. Wind uh, fan blowing on it was hell. Just waiting to nine o'clock. I got about another minute. Just call it. Lord, we thank you for the day. We thank you for the things that you do for us, Lord. We thank you for your many blessings. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you, cause his face to shine upon you, and give you peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Dave. Yes, sir. As always, wonderful job. All right, item number three is citizens' comments. I don't have anyone that signed up to speak. Uh, so we'll move on to item number four. And that is uh, consideration approval of minutes from uh, October 28th. We well, got those electronically, and I'm sure some of you printed them. She did print me off set, but I would make a motion that we approve the minutes as presented for last week's meeting. Okay, we have a motion. Do I have a second? We have a motion and a second. Are you with us? All right. Uh, so uh, any further discussion? All in favor? Motion carries. Sign my name here. All right, next item is item number five, which is a report from either the treasurer or the auditor, whoever would like to speak. There's none this week. None this week? Do, does our auditor wish to say anything? No. Nothing at all? All right. So no action on item number five. I'm sorry, item number six is uh, payment of any bills as needed. I would ask that we do that at the end. We don't do that at the end? need to get raised deal done. Okay. Well, I was waiting to get down to item number seven. That's where his is coming. Uh, Judge West, you want to come on out? Uh, all right. So we'll move on to our consent agenda, item number 7A. I'm sorry, item number 7D. We're going to skip to D as in David. Is uh, Judge West for consideration and approval of uh, Oak Hill Circle, West Subdivision, number three, it looks like. If my eyes are... Like Good morning, sir. Presenting properly. He's, he's abstaining. Well, here we've got plenty of copies. Uh, Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. As each of you is aware, uh, there was a House bill that was uh, passed 3167 became effective September the 1st that changes chapter 232 of the local government code somewhat um, contrary to some oh I don't know whether you call it speculation, rumor, gossip it is more onerous on the county than it is on the developer um, one of the things that it requires is that when a subdivision uh, plat is submitted for approval, the uh, commissioner's court or the commissioner's court designee has 10 days to respond. If it's approved, here we go. If it's not approved or conditionally approved, they have 10 days to tell you why uh, in writing and explain what part of the statute is not being complied with. Now, prior to the meeting this morning, I provided each of you an updated Chapter 232. That is with the amendments included. Uh, most publications, you're going to find just the old Chapter 232 in pocket parts to have to fill in the blanks. That is up to date. Um, there has long been in this court confusion, uh, disagreement about what are termed one lot subdivisions. Well, that is a juxtaposition. There's no such thing as a one lot subdivision. Subdivision, you, you, you take off the prefix sub and you have divide. Well, that means you have cut a piece of property into two or more tracts of land. So you really can't, there's no such thing as a one lot subdivision. Now there is, and we have approved them in the past, 
this court has approved them in the past, subdivisions where one lot has been taken out of a larger tract of land and that subdivision has been approved. The case at hand involves a tract of land that two lots have been approved so far. Those are the back two pages of the handout that I gave you earlier. The first one is recorded in plat volume five or plat cabinet five, page 257. It is a 1.263 acre tract. And the second one is in plat cabinet two, page 272. The reason I feel it is pertinent to show you these is that number, the first one that was recorded shows the tract out of which the first subdivided tract came. Number two, if you read the legal description, you will see that it refers to the plat recorded in cabinet five, slide 257. And then it goes on to say that it comes out of the same tract of land. What is proposed today is the approval of the third tract of 2.53 acres. That's the colored 11 and a half by 17 plat that I've given you. And the mylars are here too for signatures. The reason that the subdivider can't submit to the court a complete development plan, let's call it, is that he's not in a position to dictate to a buyer, well, I suppose he is in a position, that you will buy this lot or you will buy nothing at all. A buyer in the area where this is, this is rural, this is not in town. This is in the slums out south of Brownwood. And I got not even a grin. No, you didn't. Not even a grin. It is on the hill that's south of the Brook Smith Water Tower. And when someone goes to the owner of the property and proposes to purchase land, he doesn't, he or she does not propose to purchase a lot or lots. He proposes to purchase acreage. And sometimes that may be six, sometimes it may be 20. As a matter of fact, across the street from me, there is a 12 acre tract. And next door to that is a 20 acre tract. And then there are some smaller tracts that are further south. But no landowner in his right mind is going to turn down a good offer to sell property out of a tract of land that he intends to develop. Therefore... It would be like me going out there and looking at it and saying, you know, I'm looking at this piece here, but about 200 yards over there, there's some big oak trees. I said, man, I'd sure like to have those oak trees in the end with me. That's correct. I think I want to, you know, this and that. We call them a clump and the English call them copsies. But there are a lot of them up there. Right. What the oak wheel hasn't killed so far, there's still a lot of them up there. That's the reason there's really no way to give this court a subdivision such as Hunter's Run, which was lot and block. It was developed on a, I don't know, probably half acre lot situation. When Herman Bennett and his partners subdivided the Stonegate addition, they did it on lot and block. There's no way to do it here. Therefore, it's being submitted to the court a lot at a time. And I would propose to you that notwithstanding any objection by anyone on the court or anyone associated with the process, it is altogether proper to approve a lot at a time. 
There's nothing in the code that says that you can't. As a matter of fact, part of 3751, 30, excuse me, 3167, I'm dyslexic with numbers. Part of House Bill 3167 says the county may not demand that the landowner submit a development plan. What caused 3167 to be passed to begin with was that some of our more uh, metropolitan areas, bigger counties, were imposing rigorous rules commanding the developer to submit your development plan lot by lot. The whole map had to be drawn or we're not going to approve it. That exceeds the authority of the Commissioner's Court because, as you know, the Commissioner's Court is not permitted or authorized, empowered by statute or constitution. They are prohibited from taking any action. Well, the legislature now has squeezed it down and said this is what you're allowed to do and by the way you're not allowed to do what some of these bigger counties are doing. Um, the, the onus that I was telling you of that has been placed on the county is the requirement of a response time uh, to a plat uh, to explain why it is not acceptable and the conditions that have to be met and that they have to fall within the uh, subchapters of 232, chapter 232. So with that, um, I would offer this plat for approval. Uh, the, sur the, the county surveyor, Don King, is here uh, for any questions you might have along the lines of uh, approval from the surveyor standpoint. <coughs> well, while we're talking about this subject, which is not anything, what about the smaller lots in the future that do have not big enough for their own site sector? And you got to have a system put in place like we had in the past. Okay, no. I'm sorry. So we had we had situations in the past where people did these big developments, but we had to make sure they were going to have a, make available Minim water. Minimum size on them. Can I, can I so, I mean, are we still going to be able to address those when, while we're talking about what we can well, and can't do? They have to be a minimum of a half acre. A half an acre <coughs> is statutorily the minimum size for a septic system. Now, up on this rocky hill, um, I think Rita will tell you that a half acre is not sufficient. Um, Percolation it, tests it don't work. Won't, it's too rocky. The, clay, the soil is, is, is terrible. Is Rita in here? No. Uh, she'll concur with me. I've got, um, I think, an acre and three quarters, and we first had a drip system uh, that we hated, so now we have it down, as I call it, down below the hill, uh, a spray system that works just like a champ. Right. But it takes a lot of, of area to dispense with your, with your septic waste. I guess some of the questions that that normally come up and are that uh, this lot is uh, has access to a county road. It has access. It has access. It has uh, access to potable water. It does. Brooksmith water runs right down that road. And electricity. And it has electricity. And that was that. Those three requirements are part of the. Uh, I guess. Subdivision county subdivision rules. Court must make sure that those are there. Those are in place. And they are in place. And, and the antiseptic has to be signed up. And section two thirty one addresses all of that. Don, what is your recommendation on this? Well, it meets all the survey requirements. Uh, again, after September one, there's a lot of stuff changed, and this meets since we had the presence of prior, and it meets all the survey requirements. Ray, I saw in this 232 where uh, one page in there is, is some of this is marked out. Is that things that were taken out or is that highlighted? Oh, that's highlighted. I'm sorry. I, I, if, if it was highlighted and came out marked out, what what page? Uh, I'm trying to find it. Oh, here it is. Uh, yeah. it's, a, it's the uh, Seventh page. It's 232.0025B. B. 
if a person submits a plat application that does not include all of the documentation or other information required, the commissioner's court or the designee shall not later than the 10th business day after the date the commissioner's court receives the application notify the applicant of the missing documents. That was, that was for uh, uh, emphasis. Um, so, I mean, that wasn't marked out. Okay. I, so I actually had sent this to Shane to show him about the 10-day the rule. So, uh, two questions. Uh, the law allows us to do this, correct? I'm just confirming this for the record. Is that correct, Doc? Yes, Our county attorney? Yes. All right. So it permits us to do that. And will this lock us into any any kind of precedent in the future? No. Or are we still, this, we have all of our options are still This is a very unique mm -hmm. situation. Now, the other, other counties, I've contacted the other county surveyors and clerks, and, and this would fall under the voluntary uh, filing. Uh, it's something that we don't address one of our <coughs> state does not address but uh, private system can come in and voluntarily file a plan and this would fall underneath that okay well that was the with that I'll unless anybody has any other questions I was trying to wait till last but yeah I'll uh no entertain a motion if y'all want. Since this uh, Oak Hill Circle West Subdivision 3 is in Precinct 1, I move that we approve this plat. I'll do the unprecedented and, and second that myself. So, Judge, glad we could help you. Any further discussion? Um, may I also uh, ask that the um, <coughs> OSSF uh, director be instructed to either sign the the plat, the mylars as is required, or advise us why she's not. I, I I think the reason she didn't sign it was she has always disagreed with approving a lot at a time. Mm -hmm. But 232 allows that to happen. Well, we've never approved one that she hadn't signed off on previous though before, have we? Yeah. With with my uh, well, I think when I, I was I, judge, it was with some urging that she did. Yes, that's what I was gonna say. I, I I think the issue may be that she's with withholding her signature when she shouldn't be withholding her signature. So you, if if we are <laughs> well, here, that would well, we need her signature on these. Then if uh, proceed, if the commissioners think. approve the plat, right. then she subject she, to her signature. Well, no, no, no. she's gonna sign it after you approve it. If we approve it, you're going to approve she has to sign. And that gives her, well, I guess, if we, if well, we, where, where's her thing saying that though that it does comply other than the fact that she didn't sign it for that reason? Well, well she could. To clarify, back to the first file in volume 5, page 257, uh, the developer, Mr. Sutter, showed the outside total area that he planned on developing. And that, that's what sets it different than any other filing, is he's already said this is what we're going to develop in the future. And because of the unique situation, he never knows what the client wants to purchase. Yeah, because a guy could come in and buy the whole rest of the deal at one way. That's right. <laughs> and he won't refuse to, will he refuse to sell that <laughs> in one way, Melvin? I will tell you Nancy says no and she's the boss on it is the fact that that uh, when you work for yourself 50 over 50 years on it you have to make your own retirement <laughs> so if somebody comes along and this track of land out there there's over 200 acres of land that runs through there on it. And, and, and uh, if somebody wants to come by and buy uh, a small track, buy the whole thing on it, then we'll sell it if the price is right on it. And that's what we're using for our retirement that we had to make during the years that I practiced law. And my wife told me before I come in, she said, now remember, you're a client. You're not the lawyer. I mean, <laughs> we got we we got a good lawyer that knows the law. And 
But I'll just say this one thing. Since we started developing the area out by the country club on it, there's probably been $25 million more that's going on the county tax road because of the development on it. We plan to have more with the consent of this court. Now then, if you multiply your county tax rate by by the 25 million, you're going to put get the number of dollars that's going on your tax roll for Brown County, Texas to use on it that did not cost this county not one penny. We've paved all the roads, we've done all the engineering. It's all been passed by engineering as we went along and complied with the requirements of the prior courts, people on the court, I should say, for over a long period of time. And it's nothing but a good, good deal and bargain for the county when you put 25 million or more on the tax roll and it not cost you anything. <laughs> <coughs> you know. I agree, sir. Go ahead. So, anyway, I'll shut up and let my lawyer on it. It's all well, read it, read it, read it. I want to add one thing. You want to ask me? I think it is the law now, as of May the 31st, that Judge Abbott, uh, Governor Abbott, uh, enacted it and it made it come into effect immediately is that a county, I mean a city cannot go out and involuntarily take people's property and bring it into the county, I mean into the city anymore. What a golden opportunity when he enacted that law. It is for the county now to go out and start developing this, the whole county on it. The opportunity is there. The only way the city's going to be able to go out and take your, your property now is with the consent of the owner of the property they want to bring in. If you notice out on the Fort Worth Highway, there's a new dollar store going in. They went to the city of Irving and asked the city to take us in on it. The reason in being on it was because of the sewer and, and the, the uh, uh, other thing they wanted to be in the city limits. But they wouldn't ask for it. City didn't go out and grab it. Right, and you right. can't do that anymore. As a what? The way I understand the law to be as of May the 31st of 2019. They curtail and the, and the governor made this remark when he, when he signed that bill. Not everybody wants to live in the city. Well, we have a... Thank you, sir. Thank you all very much. Appreciate your attendance. And I appreciate your help. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. We have a, a motion and a second. I see Rita. Did you have anything you wanted to add? I'm sorry. I didn't hear you. Rita, we're talking to Rita. Rita in the back. I saw you come in. Did you have anything you wanted to add to this? Uh, Okay. So you think it will it will pass the OSF? It does rule. pass our regulations, but like I said, y'all wouldn't have to make the decision on the rest of it. Okay. That's the only reason you hadn't signed it was because of that. Right. Okay. All right. So we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All right. I'll call for a vote. All in favor? Carries unanimously. Thank you, Judge. Uh, thank you for accommodating me, Judge. I'm going blind. And yes, sir. My lords. Maybe easier to go up and sign them I don't have a mylar pen. Come on, We got him now. Does anybody have a mylar? He does. I just got it. We got it here. Y'all keep after it. Yeah, I want to
Two tiles. Two tiles. It ain't nothing to do with Oh, okay. That's what I was trying to This is on that deal that's there. Yeah. Thunder. the lake. Don just gave that to me earlier. You are here, you probably would give it to you, but anyway. Okay. Well, I mean, this is the only one I had it prepared. So this is I just got another one. I had to put my phone in here. Oh, okay. So that's a reimbursement. Okay. Okay. Yeah. She got the money. I hope you do that. Okay. That is signed and out of the way. So uh, there's several more places. Oh. Uh, that's why I was asking for it. I'm sorry. I, I, I didn't think it was just the one, but I wasn't sure. All right. If there's any coastal up there about them, there's going to be grass bird then. Yeah. I remember I used to walk to my grandmother's house and she lived about several hundred yards away. And I'd have, to, I'd have my, my pants with a whole horn of the knees. The time I get after that little hand, I'd have, a, I'd have to pick grass birds the rest of the day. Thank you for very much. They were about knee high when I was that size. I hope so. Yeah. Okay, so uh, we'll move on. Uh, we'll jump back up here. I won't forget to uh, pay the bills. But item number 7A, which is a consideration, is sponsored by me, consideration and possible approval of the 2020 uh, holiday calendar. Uh, you have printed, I think this is 2019. We didn't change anything, was there any? Same number of days as previously, I presume. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, Okay. So the but the dates on here are those the 2020 or 2019 dates? Okay, all right, good. Job. Good 20 up there on but, the top. Well, I wanted I wanted to make sure they were changed. Maybe he doesn't think much of you, does he? Just want to make sure they got changed before we adopted them. <laughs> I make a motion to approve all the holidays for 2020. I'll second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the holidays. Any further discussion? Uh, once again, for everybody listening, uh, they stayed the same as they are for 2019. So all in favor? Carries your name. No new holidays, no extra days off. <laughs> all right, item number uh, 7B is uh, Commissioner Kelton and uh, a discussion of uh, the burn ban. Leave it on. Is that what you're thinking? What about you, Shaw? I'm good to leave it on, yeah. Personally, I think it needs to stay on through the winter, and if we have uh, an exemption that the commissioners feel feel like it'd be okay to burn, we we issue an exemption. I uh, I agree with Commissioner Worley for what my opinion's worth on it. I would still like to leave it on the agenda, so if we have a change of heart, yeah, we can leave it on the agenda. Okay. But Okay. But personally, I'd like to see it stay on through the winter, and it may well because all that dead grass is still there; it hadn't gone away. Yeah, I'm not going to disagree with you. All right, so we'll take no action on item number seven B. That's what I'm hearing. Seven A, seven A. I mean seven B. You're right. Seven B. All right, item number seven C is Commissioner Treywick, uh, Commissioner uh, Precinct Four, consideration of possible approval application to install a private line on County Road 147 by uh, BUSD. This is Brooksmith Water District. It is on 
water subdivision, I mean water whatever SUD. Uh, it's County Road 147, the address is 5239. It is a base road and they are left there. We'll cut it, but it's all be the county specs. They fix the road and everything. I make a motion to approve that. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the the uh, uh, well item number 7D, and I'll read it all over again. Any further discussion? 7 uh, 7D. Yeah. Oh, no, 7C. I'm sorry, 7C. Just, just right yeah. Wait, wait a minute. This says cut. Tiana, did they change her mind? Yeah. I mean, a bore, I mean. No, I, I thought it was always a bore. Uh, That's why you said no, they're not cutting that new road. Uh, it, it is a bore. I'm sorry. It's good. It's on the fade road. Then. It's, no, it's on a really good base road. Oh, well, okay. I thought it was cut, but it's a bore. Yeah. Which is good. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Carries unanimously. All right, then I'll skip us back up to item number 7C, which is consideration and payment of any bills as needed. I move we approve the accounts payable as presented by the county auditor. Okay. We have a motion. We have a second also. Any further discussion? Jennifer, anything you'd like to add? No, sir. Okay. All in favor? Motion carries unanimously. All right. The last thing we have on the agenda is next Monday is Veterans Day. So do we want to meet Tuesday or do we have to meet that week? Still got bills coming in the first. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we want to meet on Tuesday the 15th? Tuesday the 12th. 12th. Uh, what am I looking at here? October. I'm still looking at Maybe October. Me Forgive me. Too. So Tuesday the 12th. Right. Next week is the uh, second Monday, which is the one of the uh, regularly scheduled meeting days. I guess we need to decide soon on uh, next next year's regular schedule if we're going to change it or leave it the same. Is that correct? Did we adopt them already? Do we adopt it already? We don't have to. It, uh, we had, you adopt them in the end of September, 1st of October. In budget. And if you don't, it stays the same. I, I missed... Uh, I think we it says you may have I missed change. a your call. No. I missed a lot of the... Uh, with my cancer issue with the uh, so I don't remember if y'all approved that or not we did. if you did forgive me I think we did. that's fine I believe you did but no the statute says you may change it Thanks, sir. doesn't say you have to okay that was just came to mind uh, so we got the 2020 holidays approved uh, we're looking at meeting at 9 a.m. on uh, November 12th that will be a Tuesday I see absolutely nobody here from the media so I don't guess they care one way or the other well <laughs> I heard somebody say if somewhere on the radio is going to be a short agenda. So. <laughs> All right. Does anyone have anything else? Uh, all right. With that, I'll declare us adjourned. Thank you all very much. I accept. Especially all of you stayed through to the end. I mean, I know it's riveting entertainment. So. It is.